Okay, so you thought practicing with a metronome was torture. Let me tell you about the needle. Or the tuner. That. Oh, that's torture. Like, actually torturous practice. I know. But it does get better. And I got some tips for ya. So, whoop. there's actually two functions to a tuner. Um, and the needle is good for purposeful and active tuning. You know, which fingers are flat, sharp, how far. The idea is that you're within a certain range of acceptability. Okay. Um, and the needle is frustrating because it is never as perfect as we want it to be. But we can get closer and closer with consistent practice. Um, and this is something else that you, you need to think about is that um, we develop our ear and we develop that um, muscle memory. So as you go through your studies on the viola or violin, cello, whatever, um, your um, range of accessibility becomes narrower, okay? Um, it's never going to be perfect, but we can strive to be as perfect as we can. can. Um, so yeah, the noodle is hell. <laughs> drones, drones on the other hand, are good for passive tuning. We can tell when something is wrong and our fingers will kind of actually naturally correct. But we're less aware of our tendencies. So um, you got to use both. Um, practice with both the needle and drones are necessary for developing your ear. Practice both, but of course not at the same time. Um, so yeah, you and especially in the beginning, cut yourself some slack. It's okay. Just keep working on it. Um, but let's go on. Try to sing or at least hear the pitch you're struggling with, with the drone before you actually play it. And while you're playing too, before you play a note, whether or not you're like practicing tuning, hear the note in your head before you play the note. That will help with that kind of passive tuning. You're expecting a note, you don't hear that, so your finger will automatically go whoop. <laughs> That's the hope. Um, and that tendency will get better as you practice doing it. Um, so you just gotta concentrate on it. Um, while you're tuning with the drone or the needle, look at your fingers. Notice if they tend to go too far, where they tend to go too far, which finger is it, where is the correct spot on the fingerboard. I kid you not, you should be able to like place your elbow on your instrument and say, this is, insert note here, <laughs> um, with a range of acceptability. But seriously, like halfway down the string, that's halfway down a C string, that's going to be a C. Um, so you can sit, uh, you can um, divide your string into fractions and you'll realize like, oh, all of the notes like line up at these spots. <laughs> um, so that's one of the ways that we actually do um, play the instrument. I mean, it's not the primary way that I um, look at my instrument. Um, I, I use a lot of my ear. Of course, I've got the mus muscle memory and I do use a bit of that, um, but we, the glory is in the details or however you say that. Um, as you get higher in pitch, like sixth, seventh, or like even farther up, um, but especially higher, the space between your fingers is gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. Um, so get used to 
actually pushing your fingers out of the way. It's not so much of a problem on the viola, but like especially higher, that does get to be a bit of a problem. Um, and then also at higher pitches, the needle doesn't work very well. Um, like way up in the stratosphere, it doesn't work there. Um, either practice with a drone in the key, or rather and, <laughs> bring the part down to an octave. Sorry, typo. Bring the part down an octave um, so that the needle can operate. Bring the part down to an octave the needle can I operate at. Sorry. Wah! So, uh, hopefully this will make your practice with the tuner a little bit less painful. <laughs>